audio demo timestamps in the description. Hello, Eric Plays Bass here. Not doing the thing in my name. If you are watching this video, this guitar is for sale, or it has already been sold. <laughs> this is a, not a Fender, it says Fender. It looks very convincing, but it is not a Fender. It's a parts caster. Uh, it is a licensed by Fender neck, so the logo is still technically not legal to sell as new, but as a used project guitar, as long as I disclose that it is not a real Fender product, then we're all square, right? Good. Um, but you can fool your friends into thinking you have a vintage Fender, because it does, kind of from a distance, would look like an older Fender, I, I, I think. Though, as I will attempt to explain what makes this what it is, know that I'm not a vintage expert. Um, I don't purport to be, and really, I don't really care about vintage stuff that much, truth be told. I just want it to work and sound good, and if it does both those things, I don't care if it was made yesterday or before my grandpa was born. Um, but this is a parts caster, all parts, licensed by Fender Neck, 7 and a quarter vintage radius, kind of a chunkier profile, I want to guess like a late 50s, early 60s profile or something like that. It's not a baseball bat by any means, but definitely more heft, not a modern C by any means. Um, plays nice and easy all the way up. Uh, Fender Bridge with the American spacing, though I, I, I'm not sure yet. I haven't determined this, so I, I apologize in advance, but I think this is, this is seven, and it, I know it's, uh, the American spacing, the standard string spacing, but the string, you can see the high E is a little too close for comfort at the edge of the board, at least for me. Um, some people don't mind that, but I do. I'm also a bass player, so I have, you know, I'm a little, uh, <laughs> sloppier on thinner strings than most, so, um, it might just be the nut cut tighter. It might just be the nut was cut a little too wide. That's what it looks like to me. Um, but I know string spacing can sometimes be a thing, and then like the Highway 1 series, they had a uh, American mounting point like this, but then a tighter string spacing. So maybe it needs a bridge like that. I don't think it does, but I just want that to be mentioned. That's the only issue present in this uh, guitar, because otherwise this thing sounds great. Um, it reminds me of my very first guitar in that I had a red with a rosewood board uh, Squire, uh, the, ty the type you could buy in a kit back in the 90s and 2000s, and uh, it got me started. So it, it, I don't have much sentimentality for gear. People that know me well know that by now, especially if you, I guess, if you've looked at my videos for a while, you see lots of different instruments over the years because, I don't know, I, I wheel and deal. I, I trade. I always try to trade up if I can, and I'm always trying different stuff until I find that, you know, that right one. So never know what it's going to be. I'm not married to anything. And uh, I think it, you're doing yourself a disservice as an artist by marrying yourself to a certain brand or a certain tone or style. Try it all. See what you like. Um, so this thing's cool. Uh, I'm just not much of a Strat guy as much as I try. I do love the sound, but it's just not my sensibility. So um, loaded, speaking of sounds, this is loaded with a Seymour Duncan psychedelic Strat set. Um, they all measure out to... The, that was the set that it, I identified it as. I, I didn't buy this kit myself. I didn't put it together. I bought it used. Um, and when I looked up the pickups, that was the closest I could guess to because they're all a hair under 6 kilo ohms. So I think that's the closest thing that Duncan sells. They're like 5.8-ish. And no reverse wound, reverse polarity middle too. So it's all just vintage strat wiring. Not a three-way though. You still get a five-way. So uh, Oak, Griggs, Oak Grigsby five-way. These are awesome i love how uh tactile they are uh tts tone volume all that stuff orange drop cap the works so you got lots of guts 300 plus dollars of loaded pick guard guts and a you know 200 plus dollars neck and then actual assembly pretty good deal for whatever i have it listed for i think deserving the fit and finish you know this nitro uh i don't think i even talked about this in this take uh, nitro Red, Fiesta Red on Nitro Tobacco Sunburst. Really cool, really hip. The, the, the aging is very tastefully done. I'm not much for relicking. I think if you're going to relic something, do it yourself by playing it. But, you know, I understand not everybody has a spare decade of time lying around to break things in for themselves, so I get it. <laughs> so this is a tasteful relic job, in my opinion, just a little bit, you know, a light relic or maybe a moderate relic, whatever you want to call it. Well, enough blabbing about it. Let me uh, let me try demoing it. I'm Eric plays bass, not Eric plays guitar, so I'll do what I can. Uh, plugged into my 
modest little pedal board today. All that's plugged in is my tuner, my Empress Bass Compressor, and my Maxon Auto Filter, which isn't even mine for much longer. I'm going to ship that out today. Uh, going through, and it's all, well, the Maxon isn't technically true bypass, so that's the only thing really affecting the signal, I guess. Plugged, as you know, everything's going to be bypassed the whole time. Plugged into my uh, 66 Vibro Champ with a uh, Warehouse Guitar Speakers GHC upgraded speaker in it, mic'd up with the Biodynamic M201 TG, uh, running into my SSL6 console, into Motu's M4 interface, and recorded here with uh, OBS. So let's give it a shot. I'm just going to run, I'm going to start from the neck and work my way to the bridge, test the controls, play all the notes, you know, do the, do the stuff to, so that you know you're getting what you're getting, right? No surprises. There we go. That's kind of it. <clears throat> Let me, uh, real quick for an outro, I guess. Let me, uh, dime my amp and see what we can get overdrive naturally from this. Low output pickups, driven amp, attenuator to keep it quiet. Let me, uh, dial this in. This is that uh, extra footage outro, <laughs> unscripted. We do it live.
wish I knew more of what I was doing on guitar. I'll learn chords one of these days. That's it. Check this uh check this thing out on my reverb store. Peace. <laughs>